Hey, so today we'll be loading models in 3.js. This is a major step when you're doing 3D stuff, since it allows you to start using higher quality assets from the web, meaning you can go and download some really cool looking pre-made stuff and import it directly into your project. Or you can build your own, assuming you have some art skills, and load it up in your project. What we'll cover today is loading and displaying a model in 3.js, I'll show you some great sites to get free resources, and of course we'll cover using Blender to model something, export it, and then loading the model in 3.js. We'll also cover how to load and display an animated model. Alright, sound good? Let's do it. First things first, let's cruise on over to the 3.js site and see what formats they support. They have this handy list here, they support a whole mess of formats, but like they call out here, they're not equally good, and you should probably stick to the recommended unless you have a good reason otherwise. The recommended format being GLTF, as mentioned right here. So let's look at some code. I've got this empty project that I've already started. You can see that I brought in all the setup code from the last project, and I already have a test model called rocket.gltf. The first step is we need to import the specific loader we need for the format, which is what this line here does. Then we need to instantiate an instance of a loader, which is what we're doing right here, and then call load with the path to the model and a few callbacks. You need to specifically supply on load and optionally supply on progress and on error. This works fine as long as you minimally supply on load. The other two are, like I said, completely optional. When this runs, we can drop a breakpoint in the onload handler and see that the parameter passed in has a scene member, which we can directly add to the scene by calling scene.add object.scene. For other formats, this is going to be slightly different each time, so you'll need to do something similar, meaning you might have to figure out what exactly you need to add. Anyway, after we insert it into the scene, we can see it in the browser. There, we've loaded a static model. Let's walk through the process of getting one from either a website or Blender. I'll fire up Blender here and we'll quickly model something. Maybe just mash some cubes and shapes together, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter since this is just showing the process. Also, I have no art skills whatsoever. Once we do that, you just need to go to the export menu here. Most of the defaults here will do just fine. Just select the name and you're set. And of course, we can change the code to load the new one. And it works like expected. We get whatever the hell this is. I said that we'd also cover where to get some good free stuff. Uh, one site I like is Sketchfab. You need to make an account, but after that you can go and search for whatever you like. Filter by downloadable here just to clear up the list a bit. Now some of these are paid, if you look at that little dollar sign, but there's a lot of good free stuff here. Just click on a model and you can see how high resolution it is and hit download if you want as well. There's also Mixamo, which is a site run by Adobe, and this is all totally free as well. You can check out, there's a ton of content here, and you can also download the model and animation separately. Lastly, I've used poly.google.com a few times to grab some low poly models. You can check it out and see if there's anything you like, and of course download in a few different formats. Now let's go grab one of those fancy Mixamo models, and I'll show you how to load them. First, find one we like, and there's a lot of cool choices, like look at this dude, he'd probably make a pretty sweet zombie game or something. Anyway, browse around. Ultimately, I settled on this little guy here with the shoe sticking out of his head. You'll need to download him. I download the FBX in T-Pose first, and all that means is he's just standing there with his uh, arms straight out. Then we go and find some suitable animations. Again, so many to choose from. Uh, let's just pick something basic for now, hit download, and I choose uh, without skin since we downloaded the model separately already. Now that we have the model, let's look at the code. First thing we need is to import the FBX loader, which this line does. Then I added this load animated model function, and inside that we define an instance of an FBX loader. This line here loads the model, and this is where we need to go and add a little bit more logic. After the model loads, we want to load another FBX for the animation, which is what this line does here. Now inside here, we create an animation mixer with the original zombie model, and then call clip action to create an animation action for the animation. Now to actually animate, uh, it's as simple as calling uh, dot .play, and that's it. There we go, he's animated. And just to cap this off, we'll throw together this little controller here and make this guy move around. I'll make this little uh, character controls class, and there's a little bit of logic here where we listen for key up and key down events. And as you can see, we just move forward and backward and turn left and right based on that. 
Then down here in the update code is where we apply movement to the zombie model. And we go and load this up. Hooray, it's walking around. Now, this is just the start. You can load up many more animations, blend them together, make them stand, walk, run, attack, die, whatever. Hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll make a much more advanced character controller in a future tutorial, but this should get you all started. Like always, code is available on GitHub, probably, if I remember to upload it. If not, just remind me, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.